All right, so next we're going to look at some properties of the cross product. I've written them all down ahead of time here. Um, some of these we've sort of already seen. Right? Uh, so in the last example, we saw that if you change the order in the cross product, um, you get a minus sign. Um, we sometimes refer to this as saying that the, the cross product is anti-commutative. Okay. Um, now, the cross product is distributive, which is useful. Um, so you can distribute the cross product across addition. Um, that can sometimes come in handy. Notice that we've stated two different distributive properties depending on whether the addition is on the left or on the right, and that's because um, we don't have a commutative property, we have this anti-commutative property, so technically cross product on the left is a little bit different from having the cross product on the right. Okay? Um, also, um, cross product does behave well with respect to scalar multiplication, so if you have a scalar, you can move it around, you can put it with the first vector or the second, or you can pull it out altogether. Remember that the cross product gives you a vector, so this is scalar multiplication of a vector. Um, we saw kind of in the construction of the cross product that the dot product of the cross product with either of the two vectors you started with should be zero, right? The whole point of the cross product is to give you something that is orthogonal to the vectors you uh, started with. Um, and if you cross with the zero vector, you get zero. Uh, this, um, this last one here, uh, this is known as the triple scalar product. Um, and either of these two orders, uh, what it ends up giving you, for those who have seen it, um, you, get, you get a 3 by 3 determinant. It looks like u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, w1, w2, and W3. Uh, and you would expand that in exactly the same way that we did the expansion when we looked at that sort of determinant trick for remembering the cross product. The main difference being that you're replacing i, j, k by numbers. So you just plug in the numbers and you simplify and you, you get the result. Um, it turns out this has a geometric interpretation. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, you can interpret that triple scalar product as a volume. Um, and the cross product itself turns out to have some connections to area, and we'll be talking about that momentarily. Um, there are a few other things that are maybe, I, I think, worth pointing out. Um, one is that the cross product is, and this is kind of interesting, the cross product is not associative. Okay? Um, so, you know, if, if you do, let's say you cross v, right? That's a vector. And since it's a vector, you could then take that and cross it with w. Um, and you know, think about every operation you've encountered in your life up to this point, right? Every sort of addition and multiplication that you've dealt with, you always had this associative property to allow you to extend to products or sums of three or more things. Not so with the cross product. It is, in fact, not the same as doing u crossed with um, v crossed with w. Um, these are not the same. There, there is a way, that, there is an identity that you can, you can do with this. Um, when I was with, like an undergrad doing like, you know, first year physics, they taught us that as, as the, um, the back minus cab rule, you use BAC instead of UVW. Um, but now, to be honest, I forget which of the two corresponds to that rule. Um, so I probably would get it wrong if I wrote it down. Uh, there is an identity that you can write down for these sort of triple vector products. Uh, they're not going to come up for us at all in calculus, so I think we're, we're not going to worry about it. We're not going to focus on it. Um, there are, I think, some rare scenarios in physics where these triple cross products do show up and you want to be able to work with them. Um, the, the triple scalar product, I think, is more common. Okay. All right. Um, so, so those are some of the properties. They are, you know, it's a little bit more complicated than with, say, a dot product or, or you know, regular addition or, or multiplication because you don't have associativity and you have anti-commutativity. Uh, but there is enough there to kind of let you sometimes do certain calculations that are a little bit um, more straightforward. Um, and one of the things that you might 
um, note. And we'll do this, maybe let's do a quick example. Um, let's say we want to find the cross product of 1, 0, 2, and 0, minus 1, 1. Let's go something like that. Okay. So we'll try that cross product. Now, what we could do with this is we could, we could write this as i plus 2k crossed with minus j plus k. And because we do have distributive properties, um, and we do have this anti-commutativity, and also because we can pull out scalars, you can actually like foil this out. So this is yet another way of computing the cross product. Um, I don't recommend it unless you have at least a couple zeros involved. If, if you have all non-zero entries, I think that determinant trick is still the more efficient way of doing things. But if you've got a couple zeros lying around, sometimes this is more convenient. So we can do i times i cross with minus j. And because of property three, we can pull the minus sign out. So minus i cross j, right? And then we can do two k cross minus j. Oh, but again, the minus sign comes out, right? So minus 2k cross j, right? So we, and now we're going to do them with the k. So uh, i cross uh, k. And then we can do 2k crossed with k. And again, we can pull those scalars right out for the terms that have the scalars. Um, and that leaves us with just needing to know how to compute cross products of those sort of standard unit vectors. Uh, and it turns out there's kind of a, I don't know, this is how I like to remember it. Um, think about sort of i, j, um, k. And, and you can work these out for yourself. It's a very straightforward exercise using the definition of the cross product. Um, that if you do i cross with j, you'll get k. And the, the arrows here are going in the direction of, of positive cross products. So, so i cross j would give me k. j cross with k gives me i. k cross with i gives me j. So I, you, you can remember them in this sort of circle here of, of cross products. Um, I find it useful. Uh, and then you might say, well, what about k cross with k? What do you get there? Well, um, if you think about either definition of the cross product, whichever formula you want to use for computing the cross product, um, if you take the cross product of any two identical vectors, you're always going to get zero, right? Um, because the, those two rows are going to be the same. And so when you do the subtractions, everything is going to cancel out. Uh, in fact, um, using property three here, we might notice that if, uh, if let's say u and v are parallel, then u cross v will, will be zero. So, you, you know, sometimes you use cross product, maybe you could use it as a test for parallelism, uh, although usually you can check if vectors are parallel by inspection because, of course, being parallel means that, you know, what does it mean to say that they're parallel? Saying that they're parallel would mean that, for example, I could write v as a scalar multiple of u. And so then u cross v would be u crossed with cu. And you can pull the scalar out. And it's a pretty straightforward to, to check that any vector cross with itself will give you 0. And Scalar times the zero vector is still going to give you the zero vector, right? Um, so that means that in this calculation here, k cross with k will be zero, right? Um, I cross j is, is k. k cross j, oh, you got to go back the wrong way, right? k cross j goes the wrong way around, so you get a minus sign. So this is minus i. And um, I cross K again is going backwards, so I cross K would be minus J. Okay. And 
So then you would have, kind of collecting things up here, uh, we have minus 2 times minus i is 2i um, minus j minus k. Okay? So 2 minus 1 minus 1. Um, there are occasions where that is sometimes a, a convenient way of realizing that you can also calculate the cross product that way as well.